One day I was purchasing gas and the cashier asked, how was I doing? I told her that I was fabulous. She said, wow, really? I wish I could say the same thing. I told her that we all could if we genuinely wanted to. She said, do you mean if we had the man upstairs? I said, exactly. She said that she never read her Bible, but remembers many of the things her mother told her growing up. She went on to say that she lives in fear and has always been afraid to die. And she says she doesn't want to leave her grandchildren. I told her a truth often rejected by many Christians. Fear will send you to hell. And I asked her, why would someone choose to live in hell and die and go to hell? According to psychology today, fear is a vital response to physical and emotional danger that has been pivotal throughout human evolution, especially in ancient times when men and women regularly face life and death situations. The author writes, nothing conquers anxiety so powerfully as facing what we are afraid of. When we stop avoiding, we give our brain a chance to learn something new. Most likely you will discover that your fear disasters don't come true. What you find instead are manageable problems that you can handle. The average person would agree with psychologists understanding of fear. This is why many have found quotes like be scared and do it anyway. And fears are nothing more than a state of mind. Some of the most acceptable saying I, I really like about you is you are unusually fearless and willing to go in the face of other people telling you something is crazy. And I know a lot of pretty crazy people. You still stand out. Uh, where does that come from? Or how do you think about making a decision when everyone tells you this is a crazy idea or where do you get the internal strength to do that? Well, first of all, I'd say, I actually think I, I think I fear feel fear quite strongly. Um, so it's not as though I just have the absence of fear. I, I feel it quite strongly. Um, but there, there are just times when something is important enough, that you believe in it enough, that you, you do it in spite of the fear. Many quotations that exist to help support one experience with fear and their psychological backing are indeed detrimental. Not only is the understanding biblically wrong, but these ideas have made their way into church institutions, jeopardizing one's place in eternal rest. Who am I to think that I could accomplish great things? But I want to, but I get paralyzed with fear and let's, can't move. Let's talk about that. I, let's talk about that. I because love that. this is a, something a that I question. think people do not understand. When people see other people who have great accomplishments, they assume that they have no fear. The reality is, you got to feel the fear, baby girl, and do it anyway. <laughs> Today, Christians are taught that they can choose between fear and faith. They can either believe or be afraid. And if they decide to have faith, they will win. And if they choose fear, they will have to try again. The reality is that this psychological approach to fear is clearly unbiblical. Fear is not the absence of faith, but obedience. When Christians experience fear or anxiety, it's not that they have chosen fear over faith, Instead, they have decided to be defiant. The story of when the apostle Peter walked on water is often used to help support an inaccurate claim that the presence of fear is the absence of faith. When Yahusha commanded his disciple to exit the boat and walk towards him on the water, Peter did as he was told. Along the way, instead of continue as instructed, he looked and saw that the wind was boisterous. Then Peter became afraid and began to sink. It wasn't that the apostle chose fear. He decided to be wayward. Yahusha told Peter to come to him. He didn't speak about the waves nor the wind, but because of choosing not to do as he was commanded, but rather focus on the irrelevant, fear took over and defeat arrived. Choosing not to obey is why Christians and all mankind live in fear. When it comes to living fearlessly, there are specifics that Yahusha and the Heavenly Father Yahuwah have provided that must be adhered to to avoid being manipulated by fear. Firstly, it starts with being born again. The essential scriptural truth often not spoke of in church institutions in the present age is the spiritual regeneration of a sinner. When inquiring about the miraculous ability of Yahusha, Nicodemus, a ruler of Yasharel, came to him and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher that come from Yahuwah, but no one can do the signs that you do 
unless Yahuwah is with him. Yahusha tells him, most certainly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Yahuwah. And most certainly I say unto you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter his kingdom. Yahusha makes it known that he had to be born again or baptized to fiercely do what he was called to do, which was utterly obeying what the father has commanded, the absence of fear and faith in action. He goes on to say, the wind blows where it wishes. You hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who was born of the spirit. When one received the spirit of Yahuwah, this Christian can decide to be no longer tracked or controlled by fear. However, the reason many Christians become born again, yet live life still dictated by fear, is that they fail to comprehend that fear is a real spirit. And because of not grasping this truth, though baptized, fear continues to have authority in their life, failing to comprehend with the reality of a newfound child of Yua, fearless living. As the Apostle Paul builds and encourages protege Timothy, reminding him to stir up the gift of Yahuwah, which is in him through the laying on the hand, he declares, Yahuwah has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Paul tells Timothy that he should not allow fear to control him, but rather obey the Holy Spirit in him, Ruah Akadesh, operating in the gift he received. Paul even goes on to encourage Timothy not to be ashamed of the testimony of our Adonai Yahusha, nor of him as his prisoner, but to share with him in the suffering for the gospel according to the power of Yahuwah, who have saved Christians and called them to a holy calling. Fear became a factor in the life of Timothy because of disobedience, being ashamed, resulting in the inability to have the faith required to walk in his calling. Sadly, there are many reasons why Christians have chosen to not obey what has been made known. Embarrassed by the gospel, the pursuit of wealth, returning to unrighteous living, an inadequate prayer life, failure to study the word of Yahuwah for themselves, etc. As a result, fear rules their existence. The Apostle John declares in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. John informs Christians that living in fear is because one is not living in Yahuwah, fearless love. And not being in Yahuwah is not obeying his son, who is the only way for one to be in the heavenly father. This is why Yahusha professed to his disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. When fear leaves one life, the soul dreads being tormented, which is the product of disobedience. Christians must understand that the soul is fully aware of its origin, Yahuwah, and it knows it will return to the Father who is in heaven to give an account for actions taken in the flesh. Paul professes in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Yahusha, that each one may receive the things that's done in the body, according to what has done, whether good or bad. While there may be many reasons one can attempt to connect why they experience fear, it is because a person's soul has no peace with Yahuwah due to not obeying him. Three of the most common reasons Christians profess to be afraid are losing time with loved ones, necessities, and denial. Nevertheless, the actual reason is indeed disobedience. When it comes to those closest to us, the potential of not having them in our life whether because of leaving them or them leaving us, many say they are afraid, a reason that is typically at the top of the list of most people's worries. However, Yahusha says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 37, whoever loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves his son and daughter more than me is not worthy of me. The Messiah declares that if loving our loved ones is more important than loving him, we don't deserve him. And if we are presently living unworthy of our savior, our soul knows no peace, only fear, the absence of obedience. Many have found the desire to pursue money to answer their fears of lack and deprivation. Yet Yahusha asserts that as a Christian, we do not seek what we should eat or drink, 
nor have an anxious mind. The reason is that when we are following him, Yahuwah supplies all our needs according to his riches in glory by Yahusha. When disobeying his commandments, like all others, the door is open and fear is developed by the dangerous passion for money. The apostle Paul writes in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 through 10, Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, from which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Not only does the pursuit of wealth help form fear, he tells Timothy that not being content leads a Christian back to a life of sin, departing the faith, and causing much emotional suffering. The feeling of rejection is one of the primary causes of disobedience among Christians, producing fear. Yahusha made it clear that those of the world will hate those who follow him. He also explains that genuine hatred starts in the home of his followers. He tells the disciples in Matthew chapter 10, verse 34 through 39, Do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set man against his father, and daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. Yahushua warns Christians that the first place they were encountered being disavowed is among their loved ones. Because of having authentic followership for Yahusha, those who refuse to join the faith genuinely will deny their own blood. If one rejects the command of following him utterly, walking in fear of non-acceptance of others, they will not be worthy of spending eternity with him. This is why in the final revelation of Yahusha for the Christians, made known to the apostle John, he declares in Revelation chapter 21 verse 8, but the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Whether one has read or believed this verse or not, their soul is completely aware of where it will end up beyond judgment day. It's just like the feeling you probably had when you were on your way home from school and you either had a good report for your parent or some bad news. The same way you felt, knowing what was waiting on you based on the message you had to share, so it is with your soul. It has to give an account to its creator and knows before that time if it's expecting peace or punishment. You might ask what the Bible means when repeatedly telling Christians to fear the Adon Yahuwah or his son Yahusha. The understanding is not human fear, disobedience, but holy fear, obedience. With righteous fear, Christians are called to have reverence for the heavenly father and his son, which is to genuinely honor him by keeping his word and not denying his name. Know that there is no tranquility when Christians choose to walk outside of the will, way, and word of Yahuwah in this life and the next, only dread. Through applying his word in our lives daily, a spiritually born again Christian walks without fear. When we practice righteousness, our soul lives in peace with him. We don't worry about loss or tragedy, but we rejoice even when we don't understand. This is why the apostle Paul declares in Philippians chapter four, verse six through seven, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to Yahuwah, and the peace of Yahuwah, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Yahusha HaMashiach. Paul tells us that rather than allowing fear to control our state of mind about things we're unable to comprehend, we must choose to seek the Father by praying and being thankful in our requests. And through Yahusha, our hearts and minds will be protected by His peace. Otherwise, choosing to live as one desires not only places one in a constant state of fear, but on the path to eternal contempt. 
If you genuinely desire not to live a life of fear, then live in obedience. One of my greatest testimonies when I was experiencing fear is when I looked at a 25 year prison sentence for a crime I didn't commit. When I initially went into that situation, I was extremely hateful and I was plotting my revenge. And because of this, eventually I began to experience fear, anxiety, all the above. I didn't think I was going to get out. I didn't see any type of future for my life. But when I humbled myself and I started to pray and apply his word and forgive those people who were offended me, I began to experience a peace like none other. I was able to walk without the enemy being able to defeat me, even though I was still wearing a jumpsuit and being called an inmate. And I can tell you that had I not applied his truth, was obedient to his work, Yahweh would not have allowed me to come out of that case dismissed in the interest of justice. Listen, we have to understand that fear is not the absence of faith, but obedience. We look at the life of the apostles and they feared everything that was going on with the Messiah when he went to the cross. It was when they received the Holy Spirit, they had a spiritual regeneration that allowed them to be fearless in following the gospel all the way into their final breath. We are not called to live in fear. That is a spirit that comes from Satan and not the father. And is more than just paralyzing us, but placing us on the path of eternal damnation because there is no place in the kingdom of heaven for fear. So let's do our part and walk in fearlessness by being obedient, applying the word that the father gives us every single day of our life. Praise Yahweh for allowing me the ability through his spirit to fearlessly speak the truth about fear. If this video encouraged you, don't forget to like and subscribe and share with others. And Elohim willing, I'll be able to share next week. You guys have yourself a phenomenal day. And remember, always be blessed.